Hey everybody, it's Blood Suckers, and we are going to be reacting to MBT's Yu-Gi-Oh's most complicated decks ever and why no one plays them. Now, some of these decks I might not know because a lot of them were came out. I know a lot of them came out after I stopped playing the TCG. And some I might know. Um Because there are decks that I know of Yu-Gi-Oh! And then there's deck and art types that I don't know. So, I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. But let's get to it. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, a.k.a. <laughs> he always does goofy stuff like that. Today I'm asking you about complex Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh is complex. It's a game for lawyers, but frequently the very decision to play a deck. <laughs> okay, so for those that don't know, the reason why he said it's a game for lawyers. I'm sorry if my models winking to the tracking isn't great. So, <laughs> but anyways, the reason why he said you use for lawyers is because if you've been living out on a rock for the past decade or so. Actually, actually several decades, I guess, by now, huh? Yu Gi Oh! is expensive, especially in the TCG. Now, with Master Duel, it's a little more cheaper, but it it's still expensive depending on how you do it. Deck at all, which usually is comprised of a combination of the metagame, the cost, personal preference, includes a decision made about the deck's complexity. Simply put, sometimes decks are just too hard to be expected to play well. That's true. Now, people will say that there's most of the decks are hard. Uh, I disagree with that. However, he's not wrong. There are hard decks to learn. Like, currently, I think one of the hardest is Ritual Beast, but not old Ritual Beast. I'd say about maybe with the new, because of the new stuff, especially in Master Duel. Funny fact, I'm actually trying to build Ritual Beast myself, but I'm just a few dust, you are dust away from completing it. But that's beside the point. Uh... But with the new stuff, it makes it a bit harder to learn. Well, so I'm asking you to name some of Yu-Gi-Oh's most complicated decks of all time. And I'm beginning with this one, Evig Gishki. This was a really, really powerful deck that culminated in an FPK. So I don't actually know this deck. Properly and at speed could take 40 entire minutes, winning the entire match in the first game if an opponent was unwilling to score. 40 minutes? Okay, that's crazy in a lot of ways that's crazy and i play decks that use link and some of the links take for or maybe 20 minutes at most like uh i play a bear 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 gram version of plant link and this is my own recipe of it and if the combos aren't done right, it can take almost the whole game. But 40 minutes just for a combo is crazy. Scoop. This deck did not see a lot of play because there were really only four or five people who even understood the steps necessary in order to perform it. But once it topped once, it was not allowed to remain legal for much longer. Let's see what you all came up with. Megalith had a brief period in the limelight and seemed impossible to play optimally without a vast understanding of its lines and relevant interactions in the format. Ooh. Its short moment of playability was barely long enough for folks to learn it well. Truly one of... Okay, yeah, Megalith... I kind of know, and yeah, I kind of agree with that statement, but, um, which I'm sure he'll touch on this, Megalith is kind of played out of its arch type as well, So, but what he's saying uh, and what this post is basically saying, poster is basically saying isn't wrong. 
one of Yu-Gi-Oh's could have been. It was a combination of multiple things. Drytron was experimenting with this card at the release of Fool, but it is crazy just how difficult it was to play flat Megalith. Of course, it wasn't long until Block Dragon was banned, and then it became absolutely unplayable. Hard Legs got a good one. The board. Yeah, it's crazy. Without Block Dragon, Megalith basically died off, which is insane. <laughs> Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat. Oh, and if someone comes down in the comments and says, Well, oh, stop blocking, don't pause in and look, it's a reaction. You want me to be like Sniper Wolf and XQC and do nothing? No. I'm going to give my opinion. That's what reactions are about. You don't like it. Suck my dragon dick. Boards, Valons can put up going first are plain unfair, and they've got strong board breaking potential going second. But good luck learning long pendulum combos that require very specific zone placement and zone movement, plus two. Okay, so I don't like pendulum at all. I mean, I know a lot of people, but well, maybe half of the community doesn't like pendulum, and I don't know this deck. But the fact that it slowly re relies on pendulum is. Uh, a basic pendulum, pendulum deck, let's just say that. Now, even though I don't personally like pendulum, I have played pendulum decks, um, Supreme King, and Amorphage. But those are basically it. Yeah, basically those, those two. track of. This is super irritating, but a work of the Valence cards. Yes, they work in two weird bifurcated ways that you have to keep track of. They move through zones, and the zone they are in matters. That means that not only are you going to have to know their combo lines going first, but when your opponent has probably taken one of the EMCs going second, it's going to change things as well. And it's also one of those decks where you have to work really hard to get a payoff that other decks don't necessarily. Valence has had like a smattering of success uh, in terms of tops, but nothing resembling widespread YCS dominance. A lot of the reason that you even know about these cards is for a short period of time they were one of the most effective ways to summon stupid a this is a powerhouse oh, in at all. Red magic game at the cut that out Stupid ass floodgates. I voted yeah, that's release and about right with Pendulum Direct. It doesn't so deck. Cool with them, and every time it's like using them for the first time. Their plays are extremely non-linear, and your combo actually takes Wait, what deck is minutes, that? But I can't tell. In archetype shooting Quasar and Necro Valley. I oh. Think on release, they were highly playable, and no one bothered to put in the effort to master them, except maybe the one. Okay, yeah, yeah I know that. One with them against the top. Of this is correct. Uh, these days, of course, they just can't keep up with boards that modern decks can produce. But at release, these could have been a top deck. I am certain during the period. Yeah, he's not wrong. I, I, they could have been, but unfortunately, that's just how it goes sometimes. Not saying it's right, but it, it is what it is. Period. When they were first released, there was one person who would come into my streams back when I was doing viewer duels and just beat me every week with this deck. Unfortunately, Damn. it is like one of the most difficult combo decks to keep track of. And God forbid you're sitting across the table from it. Danny's got a great one. This most certainly deserved to play at God, but I legit think this deck is one of the hardest to play what at 100% is... efficiency, low bar, high ceiling. To this day, I think what Unchained can cook most decks. It's just not worth oh, it. Oh, it's Unchained. harder than the top decks. Absolutely 100%. So, I know Unchained, and I played against Unchained. I don't like it. I'd rather play... And this is coming as a U-Bell player, the, and that's the reason why I didn't go with the Fiend Link builds for uh, U-Bell, is because I don't like Untrained Soul. I just don't. I played against it. I have nothing against it, but it's personally not my cup of tea. And uh, I'd rather try to play Vanquish Soul instead. That one I kind of interests me. I, I would probably eventually. There goes my mom messing up again. Eventually, I'll probably build that in Masterdoll. We'll see. 
percent correct agav format unchained is probably the best deck in that format by so much that if everyone was as good at that deck as they were at the others it would look like a tier zero i remember testing extensively for that format and coming to the position that if my unchained opponent knew what they were doing i probably would never be able to even take a game off of them and mbt comes up with some crazy strategies um i've seen his dual taining and i've actually built one of decks he's made before uh for master Duel. it's of course i had to make it master Duel legal so it's basically a modified version of it but his uh vampire gold pride deck's pretty good Then when I played that format in practice, it turned out that I actually got to take a lot of games off of a lot of Unchained players because not everyone is Jesse Cotton. This deck was yeah, so, Jesse Cotton is so just skill -tested. unbelievable. And I would say probably maybe 20 people on the planet total were good enough at Agob Unchained to top with it. Ultima has a great one. I'll never forget the DVD spreadsheet. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. DVD's complexity is massively overstated. I don't know why everyone pretends. I agree. I like DDD. I've actually played DDD before it got all of its support. But even back then, before it got its support and stuff, it was always considered complicated. But for me, it wasn't that complicated. You just have to, and trust me, I know, it's hard for Yu-Gi-Oh players to do this. It was hard for me to do it. But you have to read the cards. Sounds like it's the hardest deck that's ever existed. The only thing that was difficult about it is the starts of its combos were different based on what cards you yeah. open. These days, its combos are even easier because they have the midpoint of Gilgamesh that just solves all problems. Yeah. But I think there's a fun They have all that support now. Between one of five long ass memorized YouTube combos that you had to do for decks like DDD and having to play in such a way that you can be proactive and react. So I didn't actually watch the YouTube combos. I kind of just went off of from reading the cards and understanding it. Plus I did have a few friends that played DDT. Ah, did I just say DDT? I've been watching too much wrestling. DDD as well. And I just memorized their um, combo sheets. Well, spreadsheet, I should say. So that's how I learned DDD. But again, he's not wrong. There was a lot of tutorials of how to play DDD back then and stuff. And it was crazy reactive playing off of an opponent uh representing different things and setting up based on what you expect your opponent to be on that you have to for something like unchained i am actually going to go to bat for this answer i think they're correct um now i i want to make clear junk speeder and the, its associated synchron deck is not difficult to execute you know it is functionally just a youtube combo event but it is probably the most Oh, let me let him finish before saying it. Build dependent strategy of all time. It's crazy that like. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I'm not much of a synchro player other than Earthbound, but I completely agree with what he just said about uh, Junk Synchron and its deck because I play against it a lot in Master Duel. There's a lot of people that love to play this deck, and. Yeah, I can just tell you from playing it, it's basically you two combos. Like whether you win playing against games it, I mean, is going to be determined by what you elect to do with the pieces that you know that you are going to include in your list. Two different synchron duelists could come to two different conclusions and play probably ten different cards in the actual yeah. Game. In my basically, opinion, one of the best decks in the Agog format, a combo deck of the format that saw very little representation due to how difficult it was to pilot. Only players like Pack put in the time to get results with it. Absolutely, that's so um... post Diabell Star release Agog environment. I think there is an argument that this is the best. Deck what deck is that? It's an argument that was being professed exclusively by one of you. I can't really tell. Uh. Hmm. I can't tell, but so, so some of these cards I recognize, some of them I don't. That's gonna be a big part of if I can tell what deck it is or not as well. 
Yu-Gi-Oh's best players, and everyone else kind of thought to themselves, why would I invest the time necessary to get good with this deck that functionally just ends up being a worse rescue ace occasionally? I mean, you had then what deck is a guy this? who had almost mastered this strategy, misplaying in like semis of the YCS, just because all of these cards have different locks and restrictions that do not play well with each other. Giant Skyhawk, of course, has one of the best answers in the thread. Fluffle is a top oh. three complicated deck to play ever. Your lines change. Okay, so, fun fact, I played Fluffle in the Arc V Tag Force game for PSP. Of, um, I don't recommend it. Not the deck I'm saying, I don't recommend the game because the translation is very... Uh, there's, let's just say there's words in there that shouldn't be allowed. And the only reason why I played it is because I played all the Tag Force games and I wanted to play this one. There are some roots that I didn't play just because I was uncomfortable with them. But the Fluffle deck is fun to play with. Um, I So, most of y'all know, I've been trying to do a branded version on Duelist Nexus. But, I can't quite master it. Once I master it, I'm probably going to build it in Master Duel. But, until I can actually get the combos down and figure out what to play with the branded cards I'm not gonna touch it for Master Duel but I love Fluffle and yeah, I kinda agree it's not easy to play so frequently, depending on toy vendor hits, wings draws, and penguins draws, I can probably count on one hand the number of players who were able to play this at a high level ex of execution consistently. I mean, one of them is literally posting this answer right now. It's so funny to think that this deck was probably like top three, top four for like years of Yu-Gi-Oh's history and just- Well, I say Fluffle, but I mostly mean Fright First. But you, when you say Fluffle, you, obviously you're talking about Fright First as well. But yeah. I kind of agree with this. It's a hard deck to play, especially if you're going with the branded route for it. So yeah, I agree completely. It just wasn't being played because it is probably the most difficult combo deck that anyone has ever engaged with. There is an argument that at release, the new Raid Raptor stuff was a top two deck and it is just too complex to play. We had people like- Okay, yeah, Raid Raptor. Fun fact, Rain Raptor is an awesome deck. I like it. I haven't played it. That's another deck that's not my cup of tea. But unlike with Unchained Soul, I actually like Raid Raptors. But uh, it's not my cup of tea. And. Yeah, that's pretty much all really the negatives I have to say about Raid Raptor. I know people don't like it but because it burns. Like, while it can burn and it can basically just OTK, FTK you. But I personally don't have nothing against Raid Raptors. Like Jesse Cotton, like calling it tier one, just for people to show up to the first tournament it was legal, and there were two people in the room repping the strategy. And unfortunately, it's time has come and gone because Ubel is being played so consistently that I can't imagine trying to end on a fork. Yeah, um, pure Ubel still takes it out. And I know this because, as I said a million times, I'm a pure Ubel player that just uses tech, tech cards in the deck. Yeah, so it's a good deck. Raid Raptor is a good deck, but Ubel still outpowers it just by the fact of how OP Ubel is, even pure. So, unfortunately, it's a hard deck to learn, but it's good. But Ubel tops it. 4K guys. Two Tone says, I know this is coming from me, but Spiral has been one of the best decks. Sometimes maybe even the best deck in Master Duel across several formats, but never gets thought of as. So, I know Spiral, but I've never played against it. I've never played. 
so I don't know how good it actually is or how strong it can be or difficult to learn but I do know people played in Master Duel unfortunately I have never played against it I would like to play against it just to see if it would be my cup of tea or not is more than rogue because it's an absurdly hard deck to pilot. It's always really strange thinking about Spiral in these terms. It was a hard deck to play, but people played it and saw success with it while it was tier zero. It's got pretty much everything legal now in Master Duel, and it's not like seven yeah, it's not it worse. There's a ton of stuff this can accomplish, and it does. And that's another thing. Spiral is pretty much for Master Duel. So the fact that I haven't came across anyone playing Spiral is insane. But I know it's kind of different per area, I guess. Frightening consistency while being able to play into boards better than almost any deck ever. It just is really, really hard. It goes without saying that this deck is so hard and keeping track of who's been summoned and who's used their effects this turn while going through your lines is sometimes impossible. I don't believe that second half, but this is probably the hardest deck in the meta game right now, in my opinion. It's one of those decks that's deceptively simple as well. You the, can is that? To yeah, that's um, virtual really beast. You need to be able to tailor your play to exactly what your opponent's up to, and you can only do that by pivoting as you see stuff that they're doing i think that old ritual beast from like 2000 so yeah he's basically saying what i said um old ritual beast was kind of hard for a lot of people but it wasn't and then new stuff makes it harder and 15 kind of gets an was it 15 really a difficult deck i don't think that deck is i guess it was 15 when the original Virtual Beast came out, huh? And did by this time I stopped playing the TCG, but I did collect them. Uh, I don't have that deck anymore, no, though, unfortunately. I lost a lot of my cards when I've moved, because I've moved so much. I've lost all my original Digimon cards, all my original Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So I'm trying to kind of rebuild my collection on those two. Even though I don't play the TCG myself anymore. And I never played the Digimon TCG. Even the old one. Because my area doesn't like Digimon. Deck is actually really too complex. There's like a clear point you are trying to get to, and it's just a matter of getting to that point. But Ritual Beasts now is just so infinitely more malleable and has infinitely more options. It's so hard to play. As a yeah, that, today, but I agree with that. It is very possible that decks like this exist for the current format. What deck decks is that? so unbelievably good, much better than those that are playing at the top tables. Um, they just haven't found a mind that understands them yet. You could be that boost. So I'm going to let it run for a few more seconds. We yeah. this in history That's why. Almost all the information we have for Gishki FDK comes from this Gishy. channel, Trinet, who put together a playlist of... I don't think I know about Gishi either, but the reason why I say I let this play for a few more minutes is because he always does these little aftercuts in his videos. Like loops that you would have to refer to when you were shortcutting the actual winning the game portion of the deck. It's something like two hours total of like just going through the motions as slowly as possible. Anyway, this guy still streams. They uploaded a video 11 hours ago. They're like That's not nice. small. They get like 100 to 200 viewers Damn. every night on Twitch.tv. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Anyways, I love you all. Hope you have a wonderful day or night depending on when you're watching this. Mwah.